Hello there. You know, at this point, I'm pretty sure that Murder Drones has completely cemented itself as a pop culture icon. The series now has more views than God, and the sheer amount of merch, videos, and fan games to do with the series is honestly incredible. And with the release of Episode 7, this series is going strong and hopefully won't stop anytime soon. My main concern with this was if it was actually going to be any good or not. And it was, so it was definitely worth a 7 month wait. Can you tell that I do not know how to start this video? So without further ado, let's just get directly into The first thing we see as the opening song ends, which by the way they changed it, is actually a pretty cool beat, so yeah. The first thing we see is a church, and thank god for that, because after all the stuff we've seen throughout the course of this series, you know, the eldritch horrors, the violent deaths, the extreme levels of heartbreak that pull you down into a deep depression that makes it so you can't make videos for four months and you end up feeling like you failed your fans. Yeah, we definitely need the Lord after seeing all of that. I need to stop adding cries for help into my videos, it's probably getting weird. There are Velociraptor Sentinels outside, which actually explains where they come from, they're probably guarding something inside. The camera cuts inside the church and we see a load of human scientists. Turns out it's actually some kind of science facility. GLaDOS would be proud. A camera focuses on a scientist who says, It's holding strong, sir! The camera cuts to this with an eerie audio stinger. Clearly they're trying to contain whatever it is. Underneath we can see the same Cabin TV logo that's on Doll's pendant and Uzi's necklace. And the massive amount of ink that's flowing upwards off the object, clearly they're trying to do their best impression of Bendy, implies that it has something to do with the absolute solver. The camera zooms in on the object and Nori's identity card flies by. This first scene is a flashback to how Nori got infected with the solver, and as the ID card exits the screen, Nori is doing the same demented smile that Uzi was doing in episode 6. She looks directly at one of the scientists, and as it turns out, he put on the wrong sodding uniform and isn't a doctor, only an intern. God damn it, Mitchell. Lightning flashes and we see the same mutated limbs that Sin has, but cloaked in shadow. She breaks free of her chains and throws a spear directly at the intern, but misses completely. Luckily, the scientist people have an electromagnet as a secondary containment procedure, so currently they're automatically doing better than the SCP Foundation. Nori doesn't give a shit that she's glued to the ground and escapes the electromagnet easily. This scientist, who's dressed up as a priest for some reason, throws another identity card to the intern and says, we can see that this is Yiva's identity card. Clearly she was designed as some kind of failsafe containment measure for Nori. Well, at least they're planning for redundancy, I suppose. The priest approaches Nori and holds up a crucifix USB drive, and that is metal as hell, and I think I want one. It must have some kind of kill code that will remove Sid from Nori's body. As the priest is recreating the exorcist, the intern runs out of the church to go get Yiva, with Nori staring directly at him as the doors close behind him. Clearly that USB kill code doesn't sodding work. For that, or the priest put it in the wrong way, which is equally as likely. The intern runs to a hallway full of storage lockers and lets Eva out, and she doesn't seem best pleased that she got interrupted in the middle of her Tetris game, and I would be slightly annoyed as well, although I will be playing Sniper Elite 4, and if you make miss a shot, I might overreact a little. They both run back into the church, but as the intern enters, everything seems to be normal, and the priest has killed Nori with the cross. He shuts the door on Eva as he believes that everything is okay, and Eva seems slightly agitated as she knows that the solver wouldn't give up that easily. As he walks through, he notices something is off, and looking behind one of the church pews, this happens. Fucking hell, that scene was amazing. The complete silence followed by Nori suddenly grabbing the priest and dragging them down into god knows where is just awesome. Major kudos. Also, is anyone reminded of the movie Event Horizon when they look at this, this fleshy looking hole to hell? It's probably just me. The simulation fades and we see that the Zolver has killed everyone in the church and it's starting to crumble all around them. The intern grabs the crucifix USB as he knows that it's the only way to stop the Solver. He looks up as Nori slowly raises herself out of the Event Horizon hole and she slowly starts to walk towards him as the Solver says, and he supposedly dies from a crucifix to the bonds. 
The footage from the intern's helmet camera zooms out and we see it's being played on an old CRT TV. Ooh, can we play some PS1 light gun shooters whilst we're here? My g 45 doesn't work on my monitor. We see a purple solver lift up the same crucifix and inspect it. Could this be Uzi potentially? The camera changes to show this corrupted core using solver powers. Okay, clearly this isn't Uzi and I'm just going to say it because a lot of you can probably put two and two together. It's Nori. She appears to be inspecting the footage of the incident that day and seemingly trying to work out a way to beat the solver. She tosses the crucifix into a pile and starts going over some notes. She looks at a map with multiple coordinates marked on it, including a place called SYS8. Not entirely sure what that means, but... Yeah. Also, she's using an iPod to listen to music, and it kind of looks like an original 4th gen iPod. Yes, I know a lot about iPods, I used to watch Bang Pods a lot. She packs the map into a bag and grabs a mining a hat and a pickaxe. Clearly she can do a much better job of controlling the solver than Uzi can. As she walks towards the event horizon hole, the camera pans to another CRT TV, and we see what, what looks like a camera feed of the elevator down to this hell hole. The level indicator above the elevator quickly starts to fall as we glitch to where the elevator is as it crash lands. Miraculously, everyone survives. They must be built of the same alloy as Raiden. The the exit is completely blocked by rubble and N in an almost animalistic panic starts desperately trying to clear the way to try and get to V. Now that was an extremely close call. Uzi states whilst literally bleeding from her eye. This series is really good at blowing the lines between mechanical and organic, and it's amazing. N apologises, but Tessa interrupts, insisting on finishing the mission down there, and suggests that Uzi sits this one out. Uzi, let's have you sit this one out, eh? Box over there. Don't look like boxes, right? Could you be any more condescending, you bitch? And agrees with Tessa, saying there might be some stuff down here that you might not want to see. Which is fair, I didn't want to see half the shit in this episode, but I still did. Uzi questions what is going on, and M replies that he doesn't entirely know, but they are not going to hurt her under any circumstances. Uzi is quite understandably very spooked by this, and accidentally creates another one of those null values, which then explodes, causing Tessa and N to be buried beneath rubble that have way too much physics. Cutting outside for a bit, Thad and Lizzie are here. Yep, they're plot relevant now, bitches. Secrets are blackmail. Okay, that was a pretty good line, I'm not gonna lie. As they're walking, gravity starts to get fucky. This could be down to the electromagnet that the scientists had down there, or it could be the planet's core getting ready for another blowout, both equally likely. A murder drone drop pop lands on the corpse spire and Jay enters it, and then this exchange occurs. So is that related to the thing you're looking for? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no it is. Cutting back to N, he's been knocked out by the cave-in, but reboots perfectly fine, because he's a soldier like that. Unfortunately, his arm is pinned beneath rubble, and as soon as I saw the scene for the first time, I thought, yep, we're going to recreate 127 hours. He's about to start cutting when he hears a giggle from the other end of the dark expanse in front of him. Two yellow eyes stare directly at him from the end of the hallway. He better start cutting, mate, really fucking fast. The bitch is back. We can see that it's Maid V standing at the other end of the hallway, but the light above her glitches out, and we can see some kind of horror behind it. Nearly it's some kind of hallucination set up by sin to fuck with N. Then this happens. Right, the world record for best and funniest transition of all time goes with this scene right here because it was so dumb and funny I burst out laughing and so did half of my Discord server members when I was watching it with them please join the server. Uzi makes her way through the halls of the facility. She starts by a pinboard to catch her breath and sees photos of Nori and the church. She continues forward and sees a tunnel with blood all around it and a skeleton holding a lantern. Uzi grabs the lantern and understandably runs away whilst looking back at the skeleton the entire time because getting snuck up upon by a skeleton is probably the least weird thing to happen in this series. And is trying to cut through his arm as the solver approaches him. She states, You know, you're one of the main reasons I wanted your team to retain your personal talents. And then she grabs him and hugs him, okay, allowing for some kind of memory sharing. We can see that in this vision, the murder drones are the real reason why everyone on Earth is dead. Sin created them from worker drones in order to eradicate humans. They were then repurposed and sent to the exoplanets in order to spread her influence across the galaxy. The whole murdering worker drones thing was a byproduct of needing oil to remain alive. The humans do try to fight back, but the mixture of near indestructible drones and the eldritch horrors make their attempts ultimately futile. The memory is cut short as Uzi's admin powers deny Sin complete disk access. I assume. The text on N's visor suggests this, at least. The solver states, Thanks for clearing the way on this planet, too. 
Let's eat. Drags end to God knows where. We come back to Uzi as she finds the church facility. She looks a little bit apprehensive, but decides to press on anyway. Inside, the church is derelict and disused, still bloodstained in places from Sin's attack. Uzi flies to a chandelier and sees the event horizon hole, and she knows immediately it's bad news. Was it the sparking or demonic noises coming from it that tips you off to that, Uzi? Uzi hears some music coming from behind her and goes to investigate. It's Nori's stuff, and it turns out she listens to Nightcore. God fucking damn it. Stop it with the Nightcore. I'm tired of it. They ruin perfectly good songs. Also, I love how they copy the old iPod UI to a T. It's almost verbatim to how it was back in the day. Uzi rewinds the footage that Nori was watching at the beginning of the episode, and what she sees disturbs her profoundly. You probably should have listened to N, love. Speaking of, the Solver tries to drag N into another set piece stolen from Event Horizon. It tries to drag him down this corridor of flesh and bone until Nori comes and rescues him. Thank God she knows how to use a pickaxe. Nori states, Why is Sin after her own murder pet? You stupid or something? Oh yeah. Well, by me then. Try! And they both start running from the biomechanical horror that's after them. With the two, the two of them run through the halls, and Nori states that she's looking for Khan, and then the cross needs to get to the surface. They avoid Sid narrowly, who looks a bit like the blockage from Control. I can't be the only one who sees that. Nori asks, How do you know my daughter? And we cut back to Lizzie and Thad outside the corpse buyer. They're planning to kick the shit out of Jay, but fail horribly as she explodes her way out of the corpse buyer and then pisses off. Khan enters back into the story, and he's trying to rebuild Uzi's ray gun, and he rants about how the murder drones were a bad influence on her. Gravity starts to get screwy again, and he states, It's the end times! <laughs> if my wife's closet is right, the planet's gonna try to eat us soon. So we're gonna go straight up Genesis Planet then. I should start making a nerdy reference counter, we've already got an Event Horizon counter. We cut back to Tessa searching the old lockers for, for working containment drones. She walks up to an old CRT monitor and does a quick capture test. I never passed those first time by the way. And we see that Yiva has been patched but Nori's patch is still in progress. Clearly that cross thing isn't a kill code, it's a patch. It's some kind of security patch, so Nori and Yiva are immune. But I suppose the immunity doesn't get passed on, which is kind of annoying. Tessa destructs the terminal and as the wreckage burns, Dole comes back in and tries to throw a knife at Tessa, demanding where the patch is. They end up clashing and Tessa cuts off Doll's eye patch, revealing that she's bleeding from the eye as well. Clearly this is some kind of symptom of late stage possession. Tessa asks if the patch is to save herself and Doll retorts. Well I suppose she isn't all that bad. Tessa states, mm -hmm. Not sure it needs you, buddy. The fire gets extinguished and then sounds start happening. Award-winning journalism there, Bison. Dole looks around in terror with only the light of her solver to guide her. Something starts running towards her and Dole tries to use her solver but it's inoperable and whatever the hell this thing is straight up finasse the camera. Direct quote from the script, by the way. She would have survived if she just turned her bloody flashlight on. Have you never played Alien Isolation? That's the first thing you learn in that game. I'm pretty sure it would still be on digital store shelves because it doesn't have any licensed music in it. Cutting back to the footage, it turns out the intern didn't die from a cross to the face as Yeva saved him and deflects the cross back at Nori and that stabs her in the face. Sin leaves Nori's body as the cross is cast down to the event horizon pit. The intern goes away and Yeva approaches Nori. Her hand is still infected so Yeva goes full zombie movie mode and cuts the hand off as it was trying to pass a null value. The act of it falling into the planet's core is what caused the blowout from the first episode. So it wasn't overmining. The blowout kills all organic life on the planet, and Nori explains that as she woke up on the surface, brain completely scrambled, she then had Uzi, and then the drones started to arrive. From the paper that she sews, we can see that the drones were sent to kill worker drones as their prime directive was to eliminate potential virus carriers, and due to N not killing Uzi in episode 1, the solver has found a way back to finish the job of destroying the planet. Uzi ends up breaking the monitor in shock. She's definitely losing more of herself and she desperately needs that patch. She's fighting herself and she'll always lose. Add another one to the nerdy reference counter. Lightning strikes as we see Doll's silhouette coming from the event horizon hole. Doll staggers towards Uzi, trailing oil as she goes. She falls to the ground and we can see from Doll's body that her insides have been eaten. She also appears to have a kind of human ribcage, and bloody hell this virus really does blur the line between organic and robotic. There's a message on Doll's screen saying fight back as Uzi is the last hope to eradicate the solver. Turns out Tessa saw the body and Uzi standing there looking bamboozled and just assumed that Uzi killed her. Back with Enna Nori, he starts running excitedly to tell Uzi that her mother is alive, but Nori insists that he can't tell her because she is the source of all the horrors in her life. Which is fair. So Tessa is intent on killing Uzi. Uzi tries to use her solver powers in self-defense, however, the solver states that Tessa cannot be manipulated. Interesting foreshadowing. Tessa easily overpowers Uzi and is about to deal the final blow before En puts his sword to her throat. You knew about the patch, yes or no? One chance. Cured. You know why I keep you around here. Yeah? 
finally, the first smart thing a character has done in this series. Tessa's head rolls away, trading blood behind it. N helps Uzi up, giving her the patch. Turns out, Sin was still in control as she destroys the cross, and now we're all fucked. Sin pins N against the wall and is about to kill him as he served his purpose. However, Nori stops her and cuts off all of her eldritch limbs. The three of them fight, and Sin throws N above the prayer table. N puts his sword to Sin's throw, but he can't kill him as Uzi is still in there. Sin straight up baits him by cutting her own neck a little before Nori cuts off N's arm and bitch slaps Uzi. Uzi starts firing null values at them, and N X expertly dodges them and Nori cuts off her hand. They clash and Uzi somehow misses every single shot. Nori then throws a pickaxe at Sin, however before it hits, Sin relinquishes control so N has to go and save Uzi from harm, getting both of his arms cut off in the process. Sin batter ups Nori and pins her against a window. Nori is about to get eaten when N does this. I mean, it worked, but there probably was a better way to tell your partner's mum that you're dating. Honestly, this is why we all love N. He's just adorable. Nori does one last bitch slap, and Uzi comes back and states, Oh, I'm not. Hey, lady, you don't freaking own me! <laughs> Damn, that was a good kip. And then this happens. I remember when I and some of the members on my Discord server were watching this, link in description, we all started laughing at that bit because it was just too funny. The two hug. Aww. Tessa's head almost rolls into the pit before she straight up picks it up and puts it back on. She removes her bloody space suit and WHAT IN THE RESIDENT EVIL 7 IS THAT?! Oh yes, get snuck upon. No! That is not no. solid snake! That no. is not solid snake! That is not solid snake! Right, so Sin was wearing Tess's skin as a suit the entire time. Now, when I first watched this scene, I thought it was a stupid twist. However, it was foreshadowed in the previous episode, thank you to my partner for sending these screenshots to me, you're a great help. And the fact that Uzi couldn't use the solver on Tessa was a dead giveaway. Another thing I noticed is that she appears to be wearing the exact same dress and bow combo she was wearing at the gala. This implies that Tessa was killed at the gala, skinned, and then Sin wore her as a skin suit. What? The actual fuck. Why do people actually like this character, dude? It was also foreshadowed that Tessa was dead the entire time from this ghost in episode 4. Thanks to my partner again for pointing that out. And last but not least, the fact that Tessa was Sin all along implies that Sin narrates her movements winningly, and it also shows that she's gotten good at hiding herself because Jay didn't suspect a thing. The two end up trying to fight Sin, but it's really hard to fight an eldritch horror that can regenerate limbs. Jay comes in to try and stop whatever is going on, but ends up getting hit by a school bus driven by Thad and Lizzie. She sees Uzi's railgun and has a momentary PTSD flashback, which is a little cool reference to episode 1. The solver starts to drag Uzi and N into the event Horizon Pit, and Uzi manages to grab onto a protruding skull, and as a last ditch effort to save N, sacrifices herself to beat the solver. Die mad, motherfuckers. As she falls through the planet's core, the screen goes black, and she finds herself floating in what looks like the broken remains of Earth. And with that, episode 7 comes to a close. So, this episode does raise a lot of questions, but it also answers a couple of outstanding We now have a gem, a more of a idea of what the bloody hell is actually going on in the story of this series. So from what I can tell, from what I can tell, Sin was originally marked for disposal, buried in the ground, and the absolute solver obviously infected her and turned her into the Eldritch Horror we know and love today. Uh, not love though, I hate her personally, but um... That's gonna get a bit shot in the comments. Obviously, Sin goes kill crazy at the Agala, kills Tessa, skins her, and uses her suit to wear as a human disguise. Ew. Then she took all of all the decommissioned worker drones in the house, turns them into murder drones, and tells them to go kill crazy on humans, which they then do. Earth goes bye bye, and then she sends them out to the exoplanets to destroy any remaining virus carriers. Now, when I was scripting this video, I was trying to think why Sin would want to do that, but then it actually occurred to me whilst I was writing it down. Perhaps, potentially, she knew about the patch. 
Meaning that if someone got patched back and had the absolute solver powers, she would have a formidable enemy that she might not have been able to fight entirely. Because if you've got two people with the solver powers, potentially one could beat the other if they fought hard enough and knew how to use the powers correctly. So by destroying any potential virus carriers, even if they haven't had the patch, this removes the potential for them to be an enemy in the future. It would explain why she's so desperate to kill Nori, Yiva, Uzi and Dol. But... There is also quite a few questions raised by this series. We don't know where Uzi is right now. It looks a little bit like what was left of Earth to me. From what we've seen from little flashbacks and stuff. And little tidbits that Tessa has given us. We also don't know if he's still alive. Seeing as N seemed really desperate to try and get to her. Potentially he can still see if she's alive or not. Maybe they give off some kind of robotic vital signs. I don't really know. And plus due to the fact that. They have clones of each other, like you can make an infinite amount of clones of a murder drone. You might be able to... She might be able to come back in the form of a clone. She probably won't remember everything, but I think that's probably for the best. I mean, look at how Jay reacts to seeing the... Um, this is seeing the railgun, she has a mild PTSD flashback. Another thing, kind of question I have is how Sin's human skin suit didn't, you know, decompose. Because if my theory is true and Tessa was actually killed at the gala, Tessa was like a kid then, and it's got to be... At least like 10 years or so later. Otherwise they wouldn't have hired... JC Jensen wouldn't have hired her. Because you can't hire children. That's illegal. So but my personal theory is that the suit is obviously pressurised. So maybe that prevented it from decomposing. So yeah. I mean it is a little bit decomposed if we look at the footage. I mean there's no eyes to it. But I think it's kind of hard to... Uh wear eyes when you have uh, a visor instead of eye sockets. And actually it occurred to me whilst I was scripting this that... It might not actually be a skin suit, it might actually be some kind of flash infection. Perhaps the when the solver takes over a human, it actually kills the host, which is the reason why Tessa looks the way she does. And due to the fact that we know the solver can, well, mutate itself, this may allow for the solver to make the skin suit look however it wants to. So, yeah, there's quite a few theories as to what the bloody hell happened to Tessa. And um, although I didn't see the twist coming, it was foreshadowed quite heavily, and I think I'm just dumb. So... I suppose that's where it, we've been left with murder drones at the moment. Um, I am optimistic for how this series will end, and I really hope that everyone makes it out alive and Sin gets her just desserts. If not, I will be very, very annoyed. We know Uzi isn't dead, but V's alive status is still kind of in the air, unfortunately. And maybe Jay, Lizzie, and Thad could potentially kind of team up and help N fight Sin. Or maybe they all go into the event Horizon Hold together and end up wherever the bloody hell Uzi is right now. They could always try and beat Sin by making a new patch. Because we can tell from the beginning of the episode that the humans that were experimenting, they do plan for redundancy. Like they had the electromagnet, they had the containment worker drones that have been patched. There's got to be a backup USB drive somewhere that has the same patch on it. I mean, that's what planning for redundancy is. So, yeah, that's all I really have to say on the matter. So... Now we part ways for uh, X amount of months until the Battlefield 1 video is finished and the Fear video and the Amnesia video. That one's been cancelled due to technical difficulties though. I don't know what is wrong with Amnesia the Bunker but it just hates my computer. I do not know why. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to go buy more much because I need that doll figure and I also need that J plushie. So comment, like and subscribe, join my Discord server, link in the description and I will see you in the next video. Whenever that may be. Wait, what the fuck? What is happening? Why is, why is it glitching out? What the fuck? Find the tape. Find the tape. Find the tape. Find the tape. Find the tape.